Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program Capital Beat. Janta Dal United Chief Nitish Kumar swore in as the Chief Minister for the record ninth term and ending his long association with the Grand Alliance government in Bihar. Along with him, two Deputy Chief Ministers and eight Ministers also swore in ending the political suspense in Bihar. But the big question is, how long will this association between JDU and BJP continue? What is the guarantee that Nitish Kumar will again not abandon NDA? And of course, whatever has happened in Bihar and uh, whatever the political landscape of Bihar looks like, what are the major uh, you know, learning lessons for the India Alliance. We'll talk about all this. Joining me now is Anshul Trivedi, Congress spokesperson, joining us. Thank you so much, Anshul. We have Sharad Gupta, senior journalist and editor. Thank you so much. We have Ashok Mishra joining us from Patna. Thank you so much uh, uh, for joining. And uh, uh, let me begin with uh, Ashok uh, Mishra. Ashok ji, uh, uh, Nitish Kumar swearing in for the record ninth term. And I was just listening to a press conference by Prashant Kishore. And he said that, you know, it's just a matter of time. And Nitish Kumar again will switch sides. Now, what happens to the credibility of Nitish Kumar and <clears throat> him? I'm also today going to talk about the credibility of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Amit Shah, and the host of those BJP leaders in the state who said that, you know, we will ensure that uh, uh, Nitish Kumar is ousted. Now they have joined hands again with the same Nitish Kumar. <clears throat> Look, uh, the decision of Nitish Kumar to quit the Mahagathabandhan and once again join the NDA, that BJP, join hands with the BJP, has lowered his image like anything. People, not only even if you talk to the Riksawala, I was talking at Thelawala right outside the Rajavan this morning when we were there. He says, look, sir, Paltu is going. When Nitish Kumar moved out of his house, and on way to Rajbhavan, the Thelawala outside the Rajbhavan selling, you know, <laughs> those Chinya Badams, he said, sir, the Paltu is going. Look at that. People just said that. So this kind of image loss of Nitish Kumar was never, you know, presumed. In fact, when Nitish Kumar started his career as a student politician, uh, when as a disciple of Jayaprakash Narayan, and then he you know, uh, join the uh, Samajwadi party politics, you are, you are Samta Yujan Sabha. Uh, so he was considered to be a very senior, uh, serious politician of Bihar. And he did that. In fact, he did that initially. He was, uh, when he fought with, he, in fact, he installed Lalu Prasad Yadav as the chief minister. Then he fought against him because uh, on the issue of governance, misgovernance. He says, no, uh, the Bihar government is not functioning well. And there were other issues. Of course, the caste issue was a major factor. And all the other castes were being ignored. The social groups were being ignored by Lalu, and who formed the Yadav and the Muslim combination. So Niti, he broke up with the different caste groups. And at that point of time, Niti was a very serious politician. He did show his mantle like a good administrator and he improved Bihar a lot. He improved the law and the situation. He created the necessary infrastructure which was possible uh, within the limits and he did many things. He, In fact, he projected himself as one of the uh, best leaders coming out of Bihar. As a union minister, he proved his you know, credibility. But all of a sudden, after 2013, when Narendra Modi was announced, uh, so he, he, he started wavering. So uh, since 2013 and now 2024, in 11 years, he has switched the sides for nearly five times. And as Prasant was saying, there, there should be no, you know, uh, questioning when he shifts his loyalty once again before the 22, 25, 2025 assembly elections and once again join hands with Lalu Yadav after a couple of months. Mm. 
So his credibility has suffered a huge loss due to his this Ashok, <clears throat> Ashok, but is he really worried about the credibility factor? What are people like you and me would say that, you know, it's a huge loss of credibility. But is Nitish Kumar really worried about that? Uh, is he really interested in, you know, uh, wading into that uh, moralistic angle of credibility? Uh, or has, he, he, has he developed too much of a thick skin? Had he been worried about it, he would not have done it. Hmm. First question. Had he been worried about it, he would not have done it. But he is not at all worried about it. Let people think whatever they think about me. I will do whatever I want. I want chair. I want kursi. That's why people call him kursi kumar. So yeah. this kind of political, this kind of you know political, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, I mean, coming for, uh, going from one party to another party. And this type of political behavior is not expected from a leader like Nitish Kumar. And I think Nitish Kumar had some problem, maybe the other people, the, the, uh, the doctors, the medical fraternities will tell you. <laughs> but I think he has some kind of problem because such behavior, we are expecting his behavior. 2013 was okay. He did not like Narendra Modi, so he switched sides. But doing it after a couple of months, you see, he did it. He, who had invited him to, who had, you know, did Lalu Jadav invite him in 2022 to join hands with him? No, never. He went to Lalu Jadav. Lalu was sidelined. In fact, Nitish won the 2020 elections in alliance with the BJP. Lalu was sidelined with 78, 79 seats. But it was Nitish Kumar who went to Lalu. Now it is Nitish Kumar who deserted Lalu and now joined hands with BJP. So it is Nitish Kumar. I don't know what guides him, what, you know, to do such, uh, such things. But uh, this is Nitish Kumar. Something is there, some problem is there that he always does that. Right. But one, one question I would like to ask uh, Sharaji, uh, you, you've seen like decades of politics. Sharaji, there have been turncoats uh, always in politics, uh, some or the other, you know, political switches people keep uh, wading into. But this time, the kind of shock, the kind of uh, surprise which uh, Nitish Kumar has got in, and especially coming, uh, you know, just ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, uh, what is so different about Nitish Kumar as a turncoat and also the breed of turncoats which existed earlier in politics? Yeah, the lals of Haryana, Nanesh Agrawal of UP and Ramvilas Paswan of um, Bihar, and uh, most importantly, let's not forget uh, Ajit Singh. He used to be a minister in almost every every government. So turncoats is a breed. But uh, with Nitish Kumar, maybe things are different. He is also known as uh, a Sushashan Babu. So besides everything else, he has ushered in a lot of reforms. Uh, if Bihar is uh, <coughs> here, investment is coming. So it's because of Nitish Kumar. And uh, also in alliance with whichever party he was, he ensured one thing that the governance should be there. Good governance should be in, uh, implemented. So that's one. Secondly, during last three years, this is second time he has switched sides. Okay. And uh, if everyone remembers correctly, then during the last assembly elections, if Nitish Kumar's party, uh, his tally was almost half. It was because of BJP, with with whom he has again, uh, miss uh, um, tied up again. So if BJP backstabbed him <coughs> and he was trying boss in last assembly elections, and then why? What was the need to go back to the BJP? So let's analyze that. It's not easy for a person to um, uh, go back to the person who backstabbed him, openly backstabbed him. And he knew it, that uh, the BJP backed Ramvilas Paswan's party, Chirag, and uh, then how things panned out, and uh, Chirag uh, means uh, 
gave tickets to his fielded his candidates against all JDU candidates, not fielding a single candidate against the BJP. But uh, so BJP uh, basically plotted JDU's fall, and he want he he want a, a revenge and all kind of things. But if he has gone back to the BJP, so there must have been solid reasons. So what I have come come to know here <coughs> is that that uh, Mr. Lalu Yadav wanted uh, Tejasvi as the chief minister, and uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar wanted to have assembly elections along with the parliament elections. So that was the the reason where both parties fell out in the. A cabinet meeting where Nitish Kumar moved this, this proposal to have to dissolve the assembly and have uh, par, uh, assembly elections with the parliament. So RJD uh, ministers they, they refused to sign the resolution, and that's when things started falling apart. And then uh, he went back to the BJP and uh, said, uh, "See, uh, the, the RJD is trying to topple my government, so so why don't we join hands again?" But uh, the, the condition is that you should uh, um, announce assembly elections along with the parliament elections. BJP refused. So then uh, he said, uh, but uh, at, uh, <coughs> at the 17 seats, which we already have. So BJP refused that. BJP said, no, no, you can't have 17 this time because there are a number of uh, part allies partners. So your number will have to come down. So that means Nitish Kumar compromised on almost everything. And is still tied up with BJP. Hmm. So he is likely to get somewhere around 14 or 15 seats this time. Right. Although he has 17 members of parliament. Right. He looks up. So what was the need? So one thing is that Lalu wanted to pressurizing him for installing uh, Tejasvi as chief minister. But hmm. that was not such a grave thing. There was nothing imminent. But no, Sharaji, yes, uh, this brings me to thing. another question, uh, Sharaji, yeah, yeah. that uh, uh, has this uh, planning for this entire conspiracy been hatching for quite some time? Because whenever mm -hmm. I, I'll ask Anshul also about it, but uh, the senior leaders in uh, in Delhi from Congress have been hinting at that fact that, you know, you one, one cannot trust Nitish Kumar. There was an element of distrust right from the beginning, but of course they were not saying it on record. That is for sure. But uh, uh, was Nitish Kumar in any way in touch with BJP for quite some time and he didn't let the India Alliance partners know about it? Uh, is that a possibility? Yeah, that he always was. He always was. He already had some people who were very close to the BJP leadership. He has people in his party. Hmm. Who are, he has two, two types of people in his party. A faction which is very close to the RJP and a faction which is very close to BJP. Mm. So he keeps on uh, means paddling here and there and uh, sees wherever he gets a better deal. So he goes for that. So this time uh, it was basically the, the pressure on him to instill, install Tejas uh, other as the chief minister. So that did him in and uh, he wanted to remain till at least one year more so that he could uh, see how uh, uh, parliament elections takes place. And then he was not happy the way he was not accommodating the India Alliance. Hmm. He wanted him to be announced uh, the chairperson or, or, or convener in the first place. But it was done very, very late. And by that time, he was rejected. And then, then this RJD pressure and, and left with him with not much scope to maneuver. And then he, he went back to the meeting. Right. That's All right. It. Right. Now, let me uh, let me come to Anshul now. Anshul, uh, uh, you know, since uh, for the last two, three days, uh, look at what JDU spokesperson KC Tyagi have been saying. And you know, there are several voices which say that it was uh, Congress which was, you know, looking like a main villain. Congress uh, insulted uh, Nitish Kumar and, you know, all sorts of statements coming out, you know, pinpointing fingers solely at Congress. Now, uh, after this uh, this whole episode, it's very ugly what has happened. But uh, what are the big learning lessons for Congress as a party? No, I mean, uh, first of all, everyone had an inkling that he was always under, uh, you know, in contact with the BJP. 
and that is why there was no consensus on declaring him as the convener as you rightly said there are certain things that we cannot say on record but in the political circles everyone knew and there was a trust deficit with mr nitish kumar so you see there is a tendency and this is the point that i'd like to you know bring to the fore in this discussion see all these are important factors and you know these are also factors but the important thing is that there is a narrative there is a narrative that is built every time someone you know does some opportunistic gymnastics rahul gandhi and congress is blamed for it see himant biswa sharma left out of corruption charges it was said that rahul gandhi was doing something you see sindhya left all of a sudden betrayed rahul gandhi rahul gandhi was blamed similarly hardik patel when he left hardik patel wrote a letter saying that wo chicken sandwich mang rahe the theek hai so these are all narratives built by the bjp which are gobbled up by senior journalists across the spectrum and this narrative is peddled as if congress is arrogant as if congress you know forced nitish kumar out of the alliance it was nitish kumar who was saying that he wanted to be a convener but you have to earn that credibility if in the last 3 4 years you have changed your loyalties four times how will people trust you that is one important thing the other thing is that no leave aside nitish kumar unko to ab sab paltu kumar bolte hain theek hai leave him aside for a moment what about mr narendra modi and mr amit shah hmm. why does no one question them why is modi invested with this halo of being principled the lone warrior the upholder of ethicality when that man has been de- uh, indulging in underhand dealings with mr nitish kumar kebal nitish kumar thoda na palte hain narendra modi ji bhi palte hain aur satta ke liye palte hain so this is very clear that narendra modi is you are saying nitish kumar narendra modi and amit shah are equally potential turn coats like nitish kumar No, no. They, right. Narendra Modi ji is the most unprincipled prime minister that India has ever had. You mm-hmm. see, he was going on and on about ranting about corruption, and now he is in bed with Mr. Pawar in Maharashtra. He used to accuse him. Him and the Bishwa Sharma. He was accusing him of corruption. He has been made the CM. He is his henchman in Northeast. He is doing all his bidding in the Northeast. Similarly with Nitish Kumar. Now I want to ask Mr. Narendra Modi, what about caste census? will see we have a certain line rahul gandhi ji and the congress has a certain line we said that we want to have a caste census we are we are standing by certain values in politics there are phases when you are powerful and when you are not powerful but there is a certain continuity of politics so today the telangana chief minister notified the caste census in telangana the last time we had a chat nilu ji i told you that the caste census will take place now that rahul gandhi has put his bet behind it you see hmm. that's happening in telangana now mr narendra modi must tell us now his allies are doing caste census why doesn't he notify the caste census nationally hmm. and this halo that is invested one someone does treacherous behavior someone indulges in backstabbing the political opponent and the congress which is the victim of that backstabbing is portrayed in that narrative as if it is aloof it is not machiavellian enough it is, and 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 those people who are indulging in unprincipled behavior are being saved by this narrative wo to chanakya niti hai ye to master stroke hai so first of all i want to plead for the integrity of chanakya chanakya was not a crook chanakya was not a dealer like these people so at least please spare chanakya number hmm. one number two there is a phenomenon which i want to bring your attention to it is called controlled opposition you see over the last 8 years who has principally opposed the modi government and the politics and the ideology of narendra modi it is only and only rahul gandhi and the congress party which has been a constant along with uh, rjd and our friends from the left all the other people have flirted i'm mamta ji also i mean i'm i'm just saying that you look at the constant politics of rahul gandhi he has been constantly against the politics of the bjp and the rss you look at mr ovc he fought only nine seats in telangana his home state but he goes and campaigns everywhere against the congress there are i won't like to name certain parties but they'll come and contest against the congress right they'll weaken the congress but they'll say that we are fighting against the bjp so there is a phenomenon of a controlled opposition which has been done through the 
weaponization of institutions there is a lot of politicians who are under pressure they are being no, but anshu, victimized no, anshu, but anshu and anshu, so anshu, and so anshu. and so no i just neelu ji let me complete and so even well meaning people like ramchandra guha ji this is a very big uh, intellectual heavy weight intellectual and a well meaning person a man who believes in constitutional values some years ago was criticizing rahul gandhi ji and saying that he was not wise enough to foresee and project mr nitish kumar as the prime minister but when sir, such things happen where do these intellectuals go who keep on attacking the congress hmm. the congress and rahul gandhi is the only constant if you want to fight narendra modi ji and the bjp this has become clear in the last 8 years no, but i'm so sure all these journalists intellectuals and political forces must align their interests with the congress and rahul gandhi i'm sure but what i want to ask you is that nitish's exit has it has his exit put congress on the back foot because now now listen to me carefully why i'm saying this uh because obviously now you know the allies will want a bigger share they will say that look the 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 the, the alliance is not working properly and uh, so in a way it, is is congress really on the back foot with nitish's exit no neelu ji see this is a very federalized block this is a very federalized coalition so nitish kumar had an impact only in bihar and mm -hmm. so in bihar we have had a long standing alliance with the rjd and that will continue in fact now the congress and the left will have more seats to contest because this guy will go to the uh, nda okay so and his, his exit, his are you saying it has come as a blessing are you saying no. it has come as a blessing for congress in bihar it see i mean let's 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 say that uh, it will give us more chance to you know more chance to articulate our politics on more number of seats Okay. but what i'm trying to say is that this this whole alliance is very federal in nature mamta ji is uh, you know to uh, confined to west bengal the rjd has interests in bihar it is only the congress which is the pan national you know opposition to the bjp and so for us nitish ji leaving as i told you we always had an inkling and that is why there was a hesitation to declare him the convener now imagine if he would have been made the convener and then he would have switched our alliance would have been in tatters but no one now is saying that rahul gandhi was far sighted enough to hold the decision why why aren't all these hundreds of channels who keep on justifying the machiavellian politics of modi and amit shah as chanakya niti saying mm -hmm. that rahul was right so this is all narrative building all these bit players who have made space at the expense of the congress have become power hungry and unprincipled will deal with the like minded narendra modi and amit shah regime which has no principles left and will get in bed with any party for electoral benefits that is very clear to the people of india now right all right now uh, ashok uh, i want to ask you that now with the fact that uh, there are two bjp deputy chief ministers eight ministers also have sworn in how much of freedom really will nitish have because uh, there is a whisper in the political corridors that nitish will not uh be having too much of freedom uh, with whatever he wants to do because now the entire thing he will almost become like a puppet in the hands of narendra modi and amit shah is that true no nitish will not have a freedom to work this time because you know there are two deputy chief ministers filled by the bjp number one samrat choudhury number two uh mr sinha vijay sinha vijay sinha was the speaker when actual trouble had started when nitish kumar last time in 2020 had won with uh, as an nda uh, you know leader so actual trouble had started due to vijay sinha who was uh, the uh, speaker then actually vijay sinha wanted some transfer of dsp in his own constituency which nitish never liked and it was uh, the trouble started from there and in the house itself the ongoing session last time in the house itself Vijay Sinha and the speaker, Vijay Sinha as a speaker and Nitish Kumar as the deputy chief minister, they had a verbal duel. Everyone witnessed it. It was reported widely in the newspapers. Right. Number now second person, Samrat Choudhury, who has taken a vow to remove Mr. Nitish Kumar as chief minister. He is wearing that pagri, that red pagri. We all noticed that. <laughs> Under the new scheme of things, now these two chaps, Vijay Sinha. 
and Samarat Chaudhary will always be, they, are, they have been designated as the Deputy Chief Ministers of Bihar. So they will be always around. And Nitish will not get the freedom to work according to his wish. In fact, when Samarat Chaudhary, I remember when Samarat Chaudhary was a minister in Nitish's cabinet last time, so he always had some tiff with the Chief Minister on one issue or the other as an urban development minister. I remember it was also reported widely in the newspapers of Bihar. So this, he will not get that freedom this time, which he used to get earlier. Look, till the time Mr. Susil Kumar Modi was the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar in NDA, so Nitish Kumar worked very freely and Mr. Uh, Modi never objected to him on any decision. In fact, Modi, at times we used to call Modi, why don't you assert yourself? So he never asserted himself. Uh, Chief Minister ne kya Nitish ji ne kar diya tha usko. That kind of attitude Susil Modi had, and that kind of attitude Nand Kishore Jada, the senior ministers had, the other minister, one Prem Kumar has been appointed today, who was dropped last time, but now he has been reinterpreted in the uh, Bihar's cabinet. But these two chaps will not allow Nitish Kumar to work properly according to his will or his wish or according to the wish of the Janta Daliu or the senior mm -hmm. leaders of the Janta Daliu because BJP will assert itself and these two leaders, Samrat Chaudhary and Vijay Sinha, will not you know, succumb to any pressure by the chief minister. Right. So from what you were saying, Ashok, uh, uh, Sharachi, if I may ask you then, does it look like a design by BJP to trap Nitish Kumar, which apparently Nitish Kumar is not realizing? Now, with the, if Nitish Kumar will not have so much of freedom to work, like he was breathing easy with Sushil uh, Modi, or even during the Grand Alliance uh, government, he was a little easy. But now with two deputy chief ministers who are not by his side, with plump portfolios not being given to him, uh, does it look like a design by BJP to trap Nitish, which ultimately will lead to the disintegration of JDU? <clears throat> Could be. I'm not too sure about that. But uh, yes, uh, people who are not on your good side, if if who are inimical to you, if you have you have to work with them, it's difficult. It's very difficult for uh, both uh, Vijay Sena and uh, uh, Samrat Chaudhary also to work with Nitish Kumar, to whom they had the vote to uproot. And now they will have to work with him, under him rather. They will have to report to him every day. Imagine. So with that red, red pagdi and uh, Mr. Samrat Chaudhary reporting to Mr. Uh, Nitish Kumar. Yes, sir. Tell me what, what I have to do. So it's both ways. One. Secondly, Mr. Nitish Kumar's utility is in the 17% votes JDU gets. So the the party which aligns with the BJP with, with, with JDU gets an advantage of the 17% votes, and the other party gets a disadvantage of that 17%. So, so the total shift is difference is of 34%, and that's a huge huge difference. So that's why wherever Mr. Nitish Kumar goes, in fact it is in it was used to be in UP also. Whenever there are three parties, so wherever whenever two parties align. They form the government as simple as that. SP, BSP, and BJP used to be three uh, corners of the triangle, and uh, in in Bihar also, RJD, JDU, and, and uh, BJP they are the uh, three corners of the triangle. So that is one. And and as far as Congress is concerned, Congress is a non-entity both both in UP and Bihar. So I don't think uh, complaining against Congress earns and Nitish Kumar in brownie points or. or KC uh, Tyagi also. So th that is basically just uh, uh, raking up an issue for the sake of raking up an issue, just finding a cause where there is no cause. So, but I feel that uh, Nitish Kumar will not be comfortable in, in NDA as he was in uh, India Alliance. But it is the same thing in Maharashtra also. So BJP is has to do a, a you can say a very tightrope balancing act uh, in both uh, Bihar as well as Maharashtra and it will be very difficult for the BJP also. Not only for JDU but for BJP also it will be very difficult. 
No, but for uh, JDU, the chances of uh, Sharaji disintegration uh, stand much higher because ultimately, if if this alliance, uh, as as what everybody is uh, speculating, that won't last long, maybe there could be you know attritions from JDU ha happening. How how uh, I mean, what are the chances that, that JDU my, as my, party will last? Yes, my information, yeah, my information is that uh, some of JDU MPs were already in touch with the BJP. And that, that was another factor which uh, made uh, Nitish Kumar uh, align with uh, the BJP. So that is one, one thing. And uh, second is that uh, if he's going to get a lesser number of seats than he has MPs, so obviously he, his, his, he has been, his, his uh, stature has been curtailed. Third, that uh, it will be very difficult for him to control his MPs and, and, and MLAs when people know that it's a weak chief minister. So that means if uh, by by next parliamentary elections, if Mr. Nitish Kumar doesn't flex his muscles, so he, his, his uh, and, and third thing is that BJP is riding on a ram wave. So they hope to reap a, a good harvest, but I don't know why they, they, they refuse to uh, <coughs> run the assembly and go for fresh elections because in that case BJP's tally would have increased maybe JDU's tally in uh, association with BJP would have increased and the only the party which would have suffered was the RJD. So I don't know what calculation BJP had in refusing for the dissolution of the assembly but uh, um, my in my uh, view uh, assembly elections would have been beneficial both for the BJP and, and JDU. Charaji, there's another question. There's also a whisper about the fact that, you know, the Lok Sabha elections and uh, probably Nitish Kumar might dissolve the assembly and uh, the state elections would help would be held simultaneously. Uh, are there chances, uh, any likely of this no. scenario? If, if that was the case, then Mr. Nitish Kumar would have been sworn in as caretaker chief minister, not as a full fledged chief minister. Right. And, and they would have gone into elections. But because now, in any case, in the next one, the, the, I think by February or, or February end, we'll have uh, parliament election notification because March end, the uh, election process has to start. And April, the whole April, we'll, we'll have elections. Right. So, in my opinion, if, if uh, that, that was the case, so that is the reason why, why, why Ms. Um, RJD, uh, did not cooperate with JDU in having in dissolving the assembly, and that is also the reason why why BJP is also uh, missed. To my information, BJP is not agreed for dissolution of assembly. Right. All right. Now, one more question to Ashok, and then I'll uh, go for the final word to Anshul. Ashok, what happens to RJD now? Now, uh, with Nitish's exit, what are the prospects of RJD in Lok Sabha elections and also in the assembly elections? <clears throat> Do not know assembly elections are still far away, but uh, will RJD try and reap a harvest of sympathy? They will try and evoke sympathy, uh, you know, amongst the people that look, we have been backstabbed. Now, is that the narrative which RJD is going to play out? Yes, yeah, definitely. It will play, play out the emotional issue that, well, in fact, today, Today morning, all the major newspapers, in fact, Hindustan, in the, which is the major newspaper in Bihar, they carried a full full page agreement of Tejasvi Jadav saying, yes, you came to the expectations of Bihar's people. Thank you very much. So it was an uh, uh, advertisement thanking Tejasvi Jadav for whatever did, he did uh, 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 when he was in government. Right. So Tejasvi Jadav and Lalu Jadav will try to encass on the emotional issue that we were dissed by Nitish Kumar midway, we had nothing. We always, Tejasvi always says that no, we are working under the chief ministership of Nitish Kumar, he is our guardian, whatever he says, we do. So definitely he will. The second thing RJD this time will, you know, go to the government saying that no, we are part of the decision taken by the Nitish Kumar government as regards the reservation policy, the caste enumeration, its uh, outcome, 
and the immediate decision to implement increase the reservation quota and uh, implement it. So this will also be a major <clears throat> plan of the RJD to go to the people. And as Rahul Gandhi is, has also picked up the caste census, this is an issue which Rahul Gandhi is uh, hammering. Now RJD will also go with the go to the people with this demand and with this decision they have taken. One thing I will also add that uh, it will not be quite easy for the NDA to counter this time because the Congress is there, RJD is there, the left parties are there, and some other major small factions, small uh, parties may join hands later on uh, with the RJD and the Congress. Right. That is India block. So this will not be an easy <laughs> task because Muslim and Yadav, they constitute 37% of the uh, total population electorate of Bihar. And add to it the part of the EBC, the part of the other caste, the part of uh, the several castes and several tribes. So they also come as a uh, formidable caste combination to counter the uh, BJP and NDA. One thing somebody will question you, saying that you know, last time also, they in 20, uh, 2019, they also had a similar combination and they won. But this time, they, you know, uh, the, the plus point with the RJD is that it is part of the government which has enhanced the reservation policy, reservation quota in Bihar. And now it has become a national issue, which the Congress is hammering. Mm -hmm. And the Congress is demanding, and some other Congress governments in uh, other states, they are also trying to implement, they are also trying to come up with some legislation in this attack. Right. So, both the things that we have been dissed by Nitish Kumar, and we were part of the reservation quota enhancement in Bihar government. So, the BJP, the RJD will try to make it an issue. Right. Now, coming to the last question on Congress and India Alliance, both uh, Anshul, now, uh, are we in a position to say that we breathe easy? Uh, the India Alliance... Sorry, I could not get you. I could not get your audio. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I'm saying that uh, uh, given the fact that whatever has happened in Bihar, is it going to be an easy path for Congress and India Alliance or you see some further hiccups in your way? See, politics is never predictable and never easy. So... Leave that aside, it was a very sad day for us because we were trying to bring in all opposition parties for the larger cause of saving our republic. I don't <clears throat> I, I don't know about other parties, but the but the Congress party under the leadership of Khadgeji and Rahul Ji is steadfastly committed to defending the ideals on which our republic was founded, the constitutional values, and ensuring and strengthening the politics of economic as well as social justice. So irrespective of what happens, we are going to stick to our agenda. We are going to push forth for the socio-economic caste census. We are going to hammer uh, our uh, position against crony capitalism and the loot of Adani. And our politics is very simple. We want to ensure that representation to the weakest and the marginalized sections is ensured. And the loot that is being done under some crony capitalists due to this regime that much money that they are looting, we want to give to the poor. So we have our models of guarantees. We have our model of the caste census, the socio-economic census. But in terms of and the narrative, to... no, Anshul, but when you go to the people for the Lok Sabha elections, in terms of narrative, will you look like a stronger alliance? Because obviously BJP and the NDA allies will always go back and say that, look, they couldn't keep their house in order. And uh, one of your allies... I mean, we, we, can, we, can, we can say that these people are turncoats, but that those are all you know, uh, small things. The larger issue is that what is the crux of politics? What are the issues on which the uh, the elections would be fought? And we have a clear vision of economic and social justice. On the other hand, Mr. Narendra Modi, along with Mr. Nitish Kumar, is completely exposed today as Machiavellian and power hungry. And they are unprincipled. From Mr. Pawar to Mr. Nitish Kumar, Modi stands exposed. Mm -hmm. And so this halo that is invested by the Godi media is now gone. And I would like to appeal to all well-meaning people who believe in our constitutional democracy to stand behind Rahul Gandhiji and the Congress, because that is the only constant in opposition that you'll ever get. The rest of the people, for reasons that cannot be declared, you know, 
can always be under pressure. But if there is one party in the Indian political landscape which will never compromise with the BJP, it is the Congress. And if there is one leader who will never compromise with Mr. Modi, is Rahul Gandhi. So it's becoming very clear now to the people of India. Right. So it's Rahul a long battle. Do. It's an ideological battle. Right. So we are ready for it. Right. Okay. So you're saying that you're ready and your vision is clear, but uh, I'm coming back to the question which I spoke of in the beginning, that how long will the association between Nitish Kumar and BJP, <laughs> how long will it last? Uh, does it have a shelf, shelf life? Prashant Kishore today had a press conference and he said that it's just a matter of time and Nitish Kumar again will probably go back to some other political party or he'll join hands with some other alliance. So we'll have to wait and watch how things play out. But yes, uh, Nitish Kumar certainly will not have an easy going with BJP. Thank you so much, uh, Ashok Mishra. Anshul, thank you so much. And one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback and stay tuned to The Federal. Subscribe to The Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.